Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm Gabe and welcome to my No Man's Sky starter guide video. Before the video starts, I just want to let you guys know this video is broken up into multiple parts. Timestamps are down below in the description indicating each part. If you're looking for something specific in this video, feel free to skip ahead any time. This video also contains a walkthrough for the starting mission Awakenings. If you've already completed Awakenings and want to get more onto the how to make more money slash nanites and what features am I missing out on parts of the video, then skip to parts 6 and 7. This guide is mainly directed towards brand new players who have never played No Man's Sky before and are starting a new game on normal mode. I wanted to make this starter guide for new players since the Origin update came out as I haven't seen too many starter guide videos post Origin update. I love this game since I got it and hope more people will come back to it. It's become a much better game since release thanks to Hello Games working their asses off and actually listening to their community and making the game what it was supposed to be. I go into the history of No Man's Sky and all the details of each update as they came out for each year, but I'll cover that in a different video. As for right now, don't forget to leave a comment down below what other videos you might want to see on this channel. Uh, leave a like as well, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Anyway, let's get into the starter guide. When you start a new game, you'll spawn on a random planet every time. Keep an eye on what direction you're facing when you spawn in, as that's the direction you need to go to get to your ship. More likely than not, you'll spawn on a hazardous planet, which means your hazard protection will quickly drain and you'll need to get in the habit of keeping it recharged. Sodium will be your primary material when it comes to recharging your hazard protection right now, so get as much as you can. One of the first features you should know is the quick menu. Press X on the keyboard or down on the d-pad on the controller to access this menu. Here you can do a few things. You can recharge any equipment from this menu as well as do gestures, go into photo mode, summon a vehicle, and access a sub-menu of other options. I want to direct your attention to the options here as you'll be able to do a few very useful things. First thing is you can toggle your perspective from third person to first person if you're like me and like a first person view better than a third person view. You can also select creature bait here which isn't really important right now as well as switch your multi-tool or toggle your flashlight on and off. The only option I really wanted to highlight was the perspective switching as I personally don't like the third person camera and it took way too long for me to figure it out. Anyway, time to progress in the story. Farm as much sodium as you can from nearby, then start making your way to your ship while you recharge along the way. If you want to get to an area quicker, then you can melee and jump at the same time, which should send you flying forward at a pretty decent speed. This is probably the fastest way you can get around on foot, and if you have a higher jetpack capacity, then you'll be able to do it for much longer and go much further. So it can be very useful later in, uh, in late game when you're exploring planets and have uh, high fuel capacity for your jetpack. On the way to your ship, repair your multi-tool scanner and mine as many rocks and plants as you can to get ferrite, dust, and carbon, which you'll need for later. Also try to collect as much oxygen as you can. I should mention that you should add an analysis visor to your multi-tool. The main quest should make you do it anyway. Uh, just make some carbon nanotubes and install it, and once you do, scan everything. This will get you a lot of units by scanning, and everything that you scan actually gets recorded down, um, which you can sell as data to certain NPCs later in the game to get a lot of nanites. If you can't find a lot of sodium nearby, then taking shelter in caves is very important as it'll protect you from many hazardous conditions for most planets, and often it actually contains cobalt and other rare materials, which are important when it comes to making money early on. If you find any subterranean relics in any caves, then always pick them up. These sell for a decent price, and you usually get one tetracobalt with them. Um, sometimes you might not. This will add to your collection of ionized cobalt and allow you to get money later on. Always keep tetracobalt. I cannot, I cannot emphasize this enough. You can refine tetracobalt at a refinery later on, and it gives you, I think, 250 ionized cobalt per one tetracobalt that you refine, which can sell for a lot of money. 
At this point, you should already have gotten in your ship and also taken a look at the distress signal right next to your ship. Uh, once you get metal plating and partially repair your pulse engine, go back to the distress signal next to the ship and you'll get a planetary chart which will lead you to a nearby abandoned building with a hermetic seal in it. It's important to keep your sodium up as much as possible while traversing there as you'll have to travel on foot. Once you get to the building, head inside to read a corrupted log and get the hermetic seal you need. Find your way back to the ship, stocking up on sodium, ferrite dust, oxygen, carbon, and dihydrogen on the way so you can repair your ship as soon as you get there. After repairing the pulse engine, make a portable refiner and refine some ferrite dust to about 50 pure ferrite. Once your launch thrusters are repaired, you're ready to take off and fly into space for the first time. Once you do get into space, there's going to be a couple things you're going to have to worry about with your ship. Your pulse engine runs on tritium, which can be obtained by shooting asteroids uh, with the photon cannon. Mining asteroids can also get you gold, silver, gold nuggets, tritium hyperclusters. Shooting the crystal-like asteroids gives you platinum as well. Mine these asteroids for their tritium and gold, then finish your objectives and test your pulse engine. Your launch thruster runs on Starship launch fuel, which is made from metal plating and dihydrogen, so always keep up on ferrite dust and dihydrogen. You can also use uranium if you're out of launch fuel and have an excess of uranium, say if you have a base on a radioactive planet. Your ship is also outfitted with a scanner, which you can use to scan planets from space to find what type of planet it is, as well as what items and minerals are on that planet. Press C on the keyboard or click down the left joystick on your controller to use this. You can use the scanner to find ancient bones, salvageable data, copper, cobalt, and other resources and commodities on any planet. Scanning planets also gives you money and the data can be traded later for nanites, so scan as much as you can. Once you get into space and test out the ship's capabilities, you'll receive an incoming transmission. Doesn't really matter what you say here, you'll receive a distress signal afterwards follow it. Once you get there, you'll get blueprints for a terrain manipulator and a base computer. Once you build the terrain manipulator for your multi-tool, your next objective is to get copper. Gather as much copper as you can and turn it into chromatic metal. If you're running out of inventory space, know that most things can be refined to something. If you have a lot of slime, you can always keep refining it until you get nanite clusters. Physium can be refined into mordite, rusted metal can be refined into ferrite dust, and, I mean, just keep experimenting. Once you make the chromatic metal, you can make a base computer and finally make your first base. Once the base computer is set up, you'll get blueprints for basic building materials like a wooden wall, floor, roof, and a doorway. Once you receive these blueprints, quickly make a small shack with a roof as a storm will start very soon. I mean, as soon as you start building, the storm's gonna come in. You don't want to get caught in it. Once you build your shack and the storm passes, go back to the base computer and you'll get a construction research unit blueprint. To build it, go to your refiner and turn all the ferrite dust you have into pure ferrite, and then any pure ferrite into magnetized ferrite. Make some carbon nanotubes and then build your research unit. You'll then get an objective to collect salvage data from buried technology modules, which are indicated on your analysis visor by this symbol. Collect as much salvage data as you can from nearby and return to your base. The first thing you should buy from your research unit is a base teleport module. The most important things you can buy from this terminal right now after the teleporter is solar panels and batteries. This is the best way to supply power to your bases at the moment. Obviously you'll have to also buy a biofuel reactor, however the electrical wiring is free. If you can, get the save beacon blueprint and leave the terminal. Save beacons will come in handy later on when you find a crash site with an S tier ship or maybe an A tier ship or you find a portal or something and you want to mark it down on your map so you can remember it. That's what the save beacons will be for. It'll always mark it on your HUD and on the galactic map so you can remember where it's at. Once you're done, follow the game's instructions for building a teleporter and supplying power to it via a biofuel reactor. You can always replace the biofuel reactor later with solar panels. And if you do run out of fuel for the biofuel reactor, don't worry, the teleporter doesn't actually need to be powered for you to teleport to it from a space station or another base. As long as it's set up at your base, you should be able to teleport to it. Now that the teleporter is all set up, it's time to visit your first space station. All right, now that the first part's over, don't worry, the rest of these parts should be significantly shorter. So, 
Once you arrive at the first space station, talk with some of the locals in here and go through any and all dialogue options that you can until you progress through the story. Once you do, go ahead and explore the space station a little bit. On one side, you'll find a trade terminal to buy and sell items, a mission agent, an envoy, and a cartographer. On the other side, you'll find a terminal to upgrade your ship or scrap it, a terminal to modify your appearance, you can select one of any of the races of the universe and customize it to almost any color you want, as well as unlock cosmetics later on. There are also five merchants. One of these merchants is for exosuit upgrades and has a terminal at their booth to upgrade your exosuit storage. There is one per space station and each one allows you to upgrade only one slot of storage. Another merchant is for purchasing modules for exocrafts such as engine upgrade modules or weapon upgrade modules. Another is for purchasing ship upgrade modules. This includes upgrades to your weapons and hyperdrive or pulse engine. Another one is the multi-tool upgrade merchant. Here you'll be able to upgrade your current multi-tool as well as buy new multi-tools as well as upgrade modules for things like your mining laser or weapons. The last person that you'll see is in a tent and this is the scrap dealer. He only takes pugnium and will sell you some decent items which you can actually use to get extra nanites. Uh, as for the pugnium, you need to get from killing sentinels. A quick edit I wanted to add in here was that yes this is true, normally you should be able to go to the tent uh, and purchase scrap and other stuff for pugnium, however the Halloween update changed that to Tainted Metal as that's a new item in the game and is currently his primary currency. I would suggest talking to as many of the locals as you can and learning as many words of every language as possible. If you get into the habit of going to a space station and talking to every person there, you'll go through language milestones pretty quickly. Once you're comfortable with the layout, go ahead and return to your base either via the teleporter or your ship, and then go to your base computer. You'll receive another distress signal from your base computer, which will lead you to a crashed freighter. Here is where you'll need to find a blueprint for a hyperdrive. Crash freighters will show up randomly throughout the game, and here is where they're introduced. The first thing you're going to want to do when you get here is interact with the distress signal at the center of the wreckage. After you do that, go ahead and pull out your analysis visor. At every crash freighter, if you use your analysis visor and look at the crash site, inspect the ground, inspect the wreckage, you'll see buried cargo pods. If you use your terrain manipulator to dig down to these or your mining tool to cut through damaged panels, you're able to repair something on it and retrieve an item from inside it. Once you retrieve these items, be quick to get away from the cargo pod as quickly as possible because as soon as you retrieve that item, it's going to start emitting a lot of radiation and will drain your hazard protection really, really quickly. Some of these should contain warp cells, starship fuel, antimatter housings, and sometimes even antimatter. This will speed up the process later when trying to warp for the first time, that way you have a bit of extra distance before you're going to have to refill. Repeat this for all storage containers near the freighter and head back to your ship. Like I said, each of these parts are going to be pretty, pretty quick from now on. At this point, you're going to have to buy five microprocessors in order to finish your hyperdrive. These are fairly expensive early game, especially if you're not saving on units. So this is where Cobalt comes in. I've talked about this earlier to keep your Cobalt, Ionized Cobalt and Tetra Cobalt. And I, uh, I want to make sure you guys understand how important Cobalt is. You can see this in a lot of different videos, especially uh, with some of the bigger YouTubers such as Jason Plays, you know, he's done a video or two on the Cobalt tactic, but Cobalt is essentially one of the most expensive items that you can get that's easily available on almost every planet. You can easily find Cobalt in most caves or you can look for a planet with Cobalt deposits which will give you more Cobalt. Either way, you're going to have to find a large planet or one with Cobalt deposits, land on it, and then once you get on the planet, go to the caves, search around, and find as much cobalt as you can. Collect everything. Search, you know, search in caves, look for subterranean artifacts in those caves, because that'll also get you some extra money. Search around for deposits, get as many of the deposits as you can, store the cobalt in your ship if you have to. 
Um, either way, I like to collect around two to three thousand early on, which may seem like a lot, but once you get into the grind of, okay, just, you know, mine all these rocks and get this deposit and then go on to the next one, you can get cobalt really, really, really quickly. Not only that, but you can also refine this cobalt into ionized cobalt, as well as refining tetracobalt into ionized cobalt. And the thing that's important about ionized cobalt, which I will go into in a future part, specifically part 7, is that you can actually, in a sense, duplicate it and keep getting more and more ionized cobalt. I'm not going to go into that right now because we need to finish the hyperdrive first, but just use this technique right now to collect as much cobalt as you can if you want refine that cobalt into ionized cobalt, or you can just sell it all, any and all ionized cobalt or cobalt. But try to keep around, you know, 50 cobalt or 50 ionized cobalt, whichever one you decide to keep, as you're going to need these later for more money making. A reminder at this point to stay stocked up on fuel and keeping your life support and hazard protection full. Uh, you can sell anything not necessary for those. You can pretty much sell anything you want in your inventory because chances are you're going to be able to get it back easily. You don't have to keep really anything if you're getting a low on funds. You can literally just sell your entire inventory if you want, land on a planet, and just start getting more re and more resources. Right now, if you just want to make a, lot, a decent amount of money quickly to get you up and running, uh, just keep farming cobalt and ionized cobalt and sell as much of it as you can at, not at space stations, but instead go to space stations and sell it to the pilots that land there. Because if you keep selling cobalt and ionized cobalt to space stations, uh, the markets, which again, I'll also go into this later, each space station kind of has its own market where if you sell a lot of one item to it, then the demand for that item will go down. And the price of it will also go down so you don't want to keep selling cobalt to the same space station over and over again because then eventually the price is going to go down and you're not going to get as much from it so sell it to the pilots at these space stations either way once you get enough money buy five microprocessors and finish up your hyperdrive now that you finish your hyperdrive you'll be able to jump to other systems once you get some fuel. You should already have some warp cells from earlier at the freighter, but the recipe for antimatter is vitally important if you want to keep having warp cells and not have to keep scrounging everywhere for them. Follow the story until you get to an abandoned building that's infested. It's going to have a bunch of different gross looking plants and growths on it, and there will also be these eggs on the outside. Once you arrive, don't touch the whispering eggs. Do not touch them. Don't. <laughs> Just don't. It's not worth it unless you really want to make an autosave and, you know, find out what happens. But if you're really feeling adventurous, go ahead. I do have to warn you, if you touch them, what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of very difficult and dangerous enemies spawning in waves and trying to swarm you. So, careful. Either way, once you go inside, careful to watch out on the roof for these roof tentacles. Once you get the blueprint for antimatter, go ahead and make some condensed carbon, as well as chromatic metal if you don't have any, then make some antimatter. Then you should be able to make a warp cell. Once you finish with the objectives, go ahead and jump towards the galactic center. Once you make your first jump, you'll receive a transmission leading you to an alien monolith. Once you interact with the monolith and go through all of its dialogue options, you should end up receiving a warp cell. Leave the planet and you receive another strange transmission. Go through the dialogue and follow the coordinates you receive from the stranger. You'll find a crashed ship and a distress beacon. Once you interact with the distress beacon and repair it, you'll be able to extract some records from it. By doing so, you'll find out the name of this stranger is Artemis, who is a vitally important character to the main story. You'll also find a blueprint for an advanced mining laser, and you can even interact with the crashed ship and claim it as your own. Just go up to it, interact with it, and you should be able to see a green claim ship button at the bottom. Now that you have two ships, although one will be very heavily damaged, you can do whatever you feel at this point, honestly. Whether it be repairing the new ship and scrapping the first one, or scrap the second one, 
or keep both. It doesn't really matter. Just take into account what specs each ship has, whether or not one ship is a B class or one ship is a C class or one ship has higher storage. Uh, just take into account what each ship has and uh, either keep both or sell one, whichever you feel like. You can have up to six ships. So keep that in mind as you build up ships over time, whether you buy them or discover them on planets, you're gonna reach a cap and you're gonna have to sell some at some point. Anyway, there's one more thing we have to unlock before we can really start freely exploring this galaxy. Once you leave the planet, you receive a transmission from an unknown source who you find out to be Nada, a Corvax. Go through the dialogue options to witness a large spherical space station appear seemingly out of nowhere. This is the Anomaly. The Anomaly will be your hub for anything story related, progression related, or multiplayer related from here on out. It's the main multiplayer hub where you can easily meet other players and friends and interact with them and even go on missions with them if you want. Either way, once you land on the Anomaly, go up to the Overlook and talk to Nada. Go through any dialogue, any and all dialogue options you can and leave. Across from Nada, you'll find this adorable little geck named Polo. Speak with him. Once you're done, go ahead and roam around the anomaly and explore a little. Exploring the anomaly will allow you to find other NPCs that give you nanites for data in, on planets and other things you found while exploring this game. I talked about this a little earlier when I told you about the scanner, but for every single piece of fauna or flora that you scan on a planet or for every planet that you scan, you can go to different NPCs and trade that information for a lot of nanites, which can be very, very helpful. <laughs> You'll also find upgrade merchants like on space stations, uh, exosuit upgrades, ship upgrades, exocraft upgrades, multi-tool upgrades. However, instead of these merchants supplying specific upgrades to you, such as an S-Class, hyperdrive upgrade for your ship or an a-class hazard protection upgrade for your exosuit these npcs actually supply blueprints to specific upgrades for each type of upgrade ship exosuit etc you can use nanites to buy these blueprints which will let you get permanent upgrades that you can use on any of your ships and i would really highly suggest talking to the ship research npc and either getting launch thruster blueprints to increase efficiency in launch thrusters as you'll be landing and taking off a lot and having to use a lot of starship launch fuel for that will be very annoying or uh hyperdrive uh, range upgrades if you can afford it you'll also find different scanners here at the ship upgrades such as an economy scanner the economy scanner is going to be very very important for money making later on so i would suggest getting it if you can and then you'll also find storage upgrades for your exosuit as well on the anomaly i'm not quite sure how the upgrade system works on the anomaly but i believe it resets for every new uh, star system that you go to. I, I'm pretty sure. So if you summon in, in, if you summon the anomaly in one system, and upgrade your uh, exosuit there on the anomaly, and then do it again in a different system, I believe you should be able to do that. There's also a construction research terminal among these NPCs, which will let you use salvage data to get more technology upgrades like the one you already have on your base except this will give you building upgrades technology upgrades anything you can really think of decor among these is a medium refiner which can be used in the cobalt money making method i'm also going to make a separate video just for that cobalt money making method that way people don't have to keep scanning through this video just to find it it'll have its own video you can buy whatever cheap items you want here, but I would suggest saving up to get a medium refiner for money making. Once you're done, go ahead and talk to Nada again, and you'll get more dialogue options. If you ask about the Crimson Lair, Nada will tell you about the Atlas, an entity that exists throughout the galaxy. More specifically, if you ask about the Atlas, Nada will show you locations for Atlas terminals, which will automatically set you on the Atlas path storyline. 
if you ask for help with Artemis, then Nada will help you progress through the Artemis Path storyline. And if you ask for help in exploration, then Nada will point out black hole locations. At this point, you're well enough into the story to be able to progress on your own. If you want, talk to Nada again, and you can transmit your milestone data to them, which will give you some nanites. Alright, on to the features. To say the very least, there are a lot of features in this game. <laughs> Every planet has a bunch of different things that could spawn on it. These could be random spawns, or you can exchange navigation data with the cartographer on any space station to receive one of four different maps. Each map will lead to a random building of a specific type, depending on the map that you use. There are maps to secure sites, such as supply depots, manufacturing facilities, and operation centers. Distress signals, such as abandoned ships, buildings, freighters, and observatories. There are maps to inhabited outposts, such as shelters, trade outposts. And finally, there are maps to ancient artifacts. The maps to ancient artifacts won't go to knowledge stones, which I'm sure you've probably already noticed at some point. Knowledge stones actually are a type of ancient artifact and are very common, so they're not seen on these maps. These maps actually take you to different things such as monoliths, which monoliths will help you find portals, as well as plaques and ruins. Each different structure, depending on the map that you use, will have some kind of unlockable or lootable item in them. Sometimes it might not be directly an item, sometimes it's a word in a language which you can find in ruins a lot of the times every one of these are random and can be found by chance just by exploring if you use navigation data then you have a much higher chance of finding what you want every time you find a distress signal or some other uncharted location then there's a chance that there will be a save beacon nearby which can be used to chart your location and receive navigational data Abandoned structures, which you've already dealt with once in the story, will contain some lootable containers and a terminal that has gunk in it. Removing the gunk will give you a log of a long dead traveler and some nanites. Like we said earlier, careful of the whispering eggs and the roof tentacles. Manufacturing facilities are structures that are still in use and are guarded by sentinels. You need to blow up the door in order to get into these. It's a common technique to go up to these manufacturing facilities and using your photon cannon on your ship to blow the door open. When you go inside, you'll see a terminal that will tell you s something that's wrong with it in the system's native language. If you're in a Viking system, then the terminal will be in Viking. Same thing with Gek systems and Korvax systems. The terminal will be in Gek if it's in a Gek, Gek system or Corvax if it's in a Corvax system. Each one has a different puzzle that you need to solve in order to shut the alarm system off. If you want to cheese these, what you can do is you can make an autosave at your ship, go in, test one of the solutions, and if it's not the correct solution, reload the autosave and go back in and test a different solution. When you successfully shut the alarm off, you should have a few options for rewards. You can either just extract nanites from the machine, expand your multi-tool, or you can learn a new recipe. There are a variety of recipes that you'll be able to learn and you'll need microchips, I believe, in order to override the system so you can get these recipes. You can only unlock up to two recipes at a time as each time you use this, you'll get two factory override units. Try to prioritize what you unlock with each manufacturing facility. I suggest getting an Atlas Pass V1 as that will allow you to open up the red containers on the ground in the uh, cargo drops and other buried stashes. This can actually get you some pretty good materials. The rest of them are pretty much up to you whether or not you want to worry about having to buy specific items later on or if you don't really want to do that and just want to be able to craft them. Uh, that depends on what you want and <clears throat> you can use that as a basis as to what you'll unlock. Supply depots contain rare materials such as lemium, magno gold, dirty bronze, etc. And the containers must be destroyed in order to receive the item. Use your ship for these because otherwise you're just going to be sitting there blasting them while the sentinels shoot you to bits. Mind you that raiding a manufacturing facility or a supply depot will alert sentinels that are nearby. And if you need to run away from sentinels, 
then I suggest flying across the surface of the planet to get away from them that way. If you go into space while sentinels are on you, then reinforcements will come from space and they'll just track you down and you'll have to blow up the ships in order to get away from them. So fly away on the planet close to the ground uh, from whatever sentinels are chasing you if you don't want the sentinels to keep tracking you down. Don't go directly into space. Wait for the sentinels to stop chasing you before you go into space. Back to distress signals, they again have a chance to go to an abandoned ship or freighter. So use distress signals if you want to try getting a better ship to replace your own or if you want to just keep raiding freighters to get warp cells and other things. Like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of features on each planet, so explore as many of the planets as you can because you might find things like outposts where they'll have trade terminals and stuff. And, you know, as you progress through the story, you'll also find more features throughout the game that you might not realize were there. The story is a good place to go to if you feel like you're starting to get bored with the game or don't know what else to do in the game and you haven't completed the story yet. Either way, next up is space features or events slash structures that are outside of a planet's atmosphere primarily. One of the first features I want to point out would be black holes. I talked about these earlier. If you ask for help with exploration from Nada, she will give you locations for black holes. Black holes are pretty simple. Fly into it. What else would you want to do in a space game? If you fly into it, it'll warp you to a completely different area in the galaxy. I'm not sure if there's a range or a limit for how far each black hole can warp you. I'm not sure if it's precise. I'm pretty sure it's just random. All right, quick cut in here. Uh, no, black holes are not random. They will teleport you 7,000 light years closer to the center of the galaxy. However, there are also hyper black holes on the outer rim of each galaxy, which can teleport you as far as 300,000 light years. Um, they're mostly already predetermined and linked based on a some kind of hexadecimal code system, which I'm not really going to go into because it's way too complicated. However, yeah, uh, black holes aren't random. They will teleport you 7,000 light years closer to the center of the galaxy. If you're getting bored with the nearby systems of wherever you're exploring, black holes are fun because you can fly into them and have an entirely new section of the galaxy to explore. You can always go back to your previous base from any teleporter or space station, so don't worry about getting lost in one specific section of the galaxy, because you could just teleport back. For every space station that you go to, it will also unlock that teleporter to use. So if you're using a space station teleporter, make sure you know which space station you have to go to, because they can fill up your list very, very quickly. The next thing I want to talk about are Atlas interfaces or Atlas stations. I also talked about these earlier with Nada, like the black holes. If you go on the Atlas path, you will start to seek out these Atlas stations for specific reasons that I will not go into for spoilers. Spo sp yeah, spoilers. Spoiler reasons. You have to visit these space stations to progress in the Atlas path storylines, and these stations allow you to go and get warp cells as well as speak directly to the atlas. There are also small shining orbs sticking out of the ground called curiosity beads. These will give you knowledge of a language and will teach you a word of any language. Sometimes it's atlas, sometimes it's gex, sometimes it's corvex, but either way these can be really helpful for either learning atlas words or other words. The next event I want to talk about is actually an event because every time you warp to a new system what could happen depending on the system that you warp to is that you'll see freighters and large ships in space and they will be fighting they'll be shooting at something uh they'll be shooting at some pirates if you help these freighters and fend off the pirates successfully then the captain will welcome you aboard a ship and will actually allow you to purchase his services the first ship that you get should be free uh, which will give you a capital ship that you can summon at any time in any part of space like the anomaly uh, they're very useful, especially to store ships. Most of your ships will be stored on your capital ship from here on out. So just remember that. Once you own a freighter, you can actually get frigates to join your fleet. You'll notice the smaller ships that are floating around the freighters, which are the frigates. There are a lot of different frigates because there are different types of frigates 
exploration, combat, etc., etc., and I don't really want to explain all of that right now because that'll just extend this part longer than it really needs to, so I'll go into them in a different video. Uh, no Man's Sky back in July also added a update which added derelict freighters into the game. Recently, they also modified them so that they're a little harder. Uh, I think primarily for Halloween, I'm not sure if that was a specific event that ended or not, but either way, they tweaked them a little bit on Halloween. Um, derelict freighters will mostly be flying through space, and you find them by flying through space using your pulse engine. If you go to the scrap dealer on any space station and purchase the 5 million unit option, then the scrap dealer will give you an emergency broadcast receiver. These receivers can be used while flying through space using your pulse engine uh, to search for derelict freighters, and actually it more just kind of spawns one. Uh, Try and I really wouldn't suggest doing the freighters too early as there are a lot of lootable items in the freighters and it can very, very easily fill up your inventory if you don't have a lot of inventory space. So, um, and you can't come back to it either, so you can't just go to a space station and sell all that stuff and come back to the freighter. Uh, you have to, you have to get it all in one trip, unfortunately. Like I said earlier, there are a ton of features I haven't even gotten to get into. You know, I've barely scratched the exocrafts, I've barely scratched base building, I've barely scratched technology upgrades, um, but I do want to try to help you guys get up and running as quick as possible right now when it comes to money, because that's probably one of the most important items to have in No Man's Sky early on. In order to make a lot of money, you need to understand the economy of No Man's Sky. Every space station will have different rates that it buys or sells items at, and each system has its own type of economy, ranging from tech, to manufacturing, to mining, to trading. Every space station will have different rates that it buys or sells items at, and each system has its own type of economy, ranging from tech, to manufacturing, to mining, to trading, which affect this rate. In order to see what type of economy each system has, you need an economy scanner. Like I mentioned earlier, you'll get this from the Starship Research Traveler on the Anomaly. Once you get it installed on your ship, you'll be able to see the economy of every single system you look at on the galaxy map. Each economy has a strength ranging from 1 to 3 stars, which determines how much product is at that system and what prices they're going to be bought and sold at. In order to make the most, you need to do a couple things. Here's the general idea. Each economy will demand specific items, meaning whenever you're at a galactic trade terminal, then you'll see that specific item has a demand percentage. This is what determines the price for that item off a certain base price. If demand is at 2%, then the price goes up to 2% from the original price. If the demand is at negative 10%, the price goes down negative 10% from the original price. It's like actual economics. The more of a specific item there is in the system, the lower the price. The rarer or less of that item there is in the system, then the higher the price. Supply and demand. What we want to do is sell a bulk amount of an item at a specific price, which will inject the market which however much you sell it, and in turn increase the supply. This will crash the economy. Many YouTubers have gone over this before. Crashing the economy is a very common strategy to earn a lot of money because what happens is when you inject, say, 10,000 of one item into the economy, then the demand goes down by 10%, making it 10% cheaper. If you do this on a much larger scale, say 80,000 or 100,000 of an item, then the demand goes down to negative 80%, which makes it extremely cheap. Then what you can do is you can buy back all that you sold and then some at a very reduced price. You'll end up making a profit by selling the items at a higher price than what you're buying it at. The demand only lowers so much for each item. In order to decrease the demand by 10%, you need 10,000 of one item. We can apply this to expensive items like cobalt and chlorine. Cobalt's the most popular, and in my opinion, one of the easiest to do this with because cobalt is found on almost every single planet you can go to. 
I don't expect you to have 10,000 cobalt right away, and honestly, getting that much cobalt is going to be a pain in the ass if you're doing it manually. However, there is a technique that can let you not only refine the cobalt at a much better rate, but also duplicate ionized cobalt. This also works for chlorine. In order to do this, you're going to need a medium refiner. You can unlock this at the anomaly at the construction terminal for 10 salvage data. Once you unlock the medium refiner and build it in your base, you're going to want some cobalt and some oxygen. Put the oxygen and cobalt together in the medium refiner so you get ionized cobalt. If you just refine normal cobalt, you're not going to get as much ionized cobalt, so put oxygen in, which will allow you to refine it at a much higher rate than normal. Then, after you refine all of the cobalt down to ionized cobalt, what you want to do is take cobalt or take ionized cobalt and oxygen and put it in the medium refiner. What this will do is it will essentially duplicate the ionized cobalt by using two oxygen and one ionized cobalt per six ionized cobalt. Meaning, if you put one ionized cobalt in and two oxygen in, you're going to get six ionized cobalt out. This is essentially a great way to massively duplicate ionized cobalt and chlorine. This works with chlorine too. Chlorine might even be better to do this with because it tends to have a higher base price than ionized cobalt. Essentially what you want to do is you want to just keep feeding your refiner oxygen and just grow and grow your ionized cobalt in your chlorine until you have upwards of almost 100,000. If you don't want to have that much then you can go to 30,000 or 40,000 but you're going to want enough to at least have a decent effect on the demand of an item at each space station. If you start to run out of oxygen and don't have enough ionized cobalt yet don't worry you can just go back to a space station go up to one of the pilots that land there and just buy some oxygen from them. If you keep doing this and keep duplicating your ionized cobalt or your chlorine and end up getting say 40 to 50,000 then you can go to a space station and sell all of it at that space station. What you're going to want to do then is after you sell all of it to that space station you're going to want to buy all of what you sold back and then some. Basically just buy as much of your ionized cobalt or chlorine as you can after you sell it. What this will do uh, like I said earlier, this will allow you to just buy it back at a cheaper price. Not only that, but it'll give you more ionized cobalt or chlorine to work with, so you can keep duplicating it. Now we're on to the next part of this strategy. What you're going to want to do is go to a bunch of different systems, usually three-star systems. I'm not quite sure if the type of system uh, matters. I usually go to green stars, i.e. trading systems. Um, I tend to have the best results there. Again, I would recommend going to a three-star system, but also look at the buy and sell rate at each system. Try to go for something above 65% or 70% sell rate and 20 to 30% buy rate. Essentially, you want to keep repeating this tactic for every three-star system that you can find or every trading system that you can find that has a good sell rate and a good buy rate. Sell all of your ionized cobalt or chlorine and then buy it all back as well as whatever stock the space station has. Mind you, you cannot do this for the same space station within a two-hour period in-game time. Economy is reset after two hours of in-game time, so you have to go to a different economy you have to go to a different space station every single time you do this. I would recommend going to maybe 10 to 15 different systems before coming back. While this is probably the most effective way to make money at the moment, there are other ways to make a decent amount of money such as getting salvage data and selling that or getting ancient bones and selling those. However, those aren't as good to make money and this tends to be more consistent. Either way, once you've saved up about 20 to 30 million units using these techniques, then the next part would be to start earning more nanites. I say 20 to 30 million because what you're going to want to do is to make the most nanites, we need to just start buying a bunch of ships and selling them. What this will do is this will give us a bunch of upgrade modules and stuff that we can either save for our ships later on or we can sell them for nanites at any upgrade NPC on any space station. Essentially land at a space station and look for B to A class ships uh, that are less than about 3 million. 
B to A class ships are the only ones that will actually spawn storage upgrade units, which you're going to want later on for your ships. Every time you buy a new ship, go to the ship terminal and scrap it. This will give you ship upgrades and other materials that you can sell for both nanites at the ship upgrade NPC and units at the trade terminal. On occasion, they'll also give you storage upgrades for your ships, which you can use to upgrade any of your ship storage at the ship terminal. Sell any materials you get at the Galactic Trade Terminal and sell any upgrades you get at the Ship Upgrade NPC. You want to sell almost all the upgrades that you get as you can just get better ones later on um, and this will be what gives you the majority of your nanites. Repeat this as much as you want or until you run out of money and you should have made a few thousand nanites. These are probably the most common techniques to get uh, a decent amount of nanites and units all at once. There are other ways to do it just by going out and finding rare items and selling them and slowly building up money over time. However, if you want to make the most money and get going easily, this is probably the best way to do it. This video took me a long time to edit, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, it took me way too long to edit this video together. I feel like I probably um, had a bit too much on my plate uh, going into this video and didn't realize it. So um, all I really want to cover in this last part is just, uh, you know, some final final notes or features that I kind of think you might want to know about the game, as well as uh, kind of what to upgrade, what to go for, and what things might be useful for your experience throughout this game. So one of the first things is you're probably going to notice, well, my jetpack's really you know, short or, you know, I don't last very long in extreme weather, how can I upgrade that stuff? Well, you can go to the NPCs on the space stations, like I said earlier, to upgrade your environmental protection um, and life support. Those are probably the two most vital things that you're going to need, especially if you're exploring more hazardous planets uh, later on. You know, as for weapons, like in your uh, multi-tool, you know, the bolt caster is probably like the very starting one, although that's not very great. If you want a weapon that does a pretty good amount of damage and uh, will consistently, you know, kill sentinels and, you know, uh, anything else that might be attacking you, then you can go for a scatter blaster. A scatter blaster is basically like a shotgun. Um, fires a wide you know cone of damage and it actually does a very decent amount of damage um, the pulse splitter is also a pretty good one uh, although the scatter blaster is definitely probably the most uh, powerful weapon that you can use at the moment um, and you can obviously get weapon upgrades for each of these different types of weapons for your multi-tool um, same thing with your ship too your ship has a variety of weapons that you can choose from to either build or to just on your ship you're probably going to need a base weapon from the ship upgrade NPC at the anomaly anyway so I would recommend uh, going into the anomaly and figuring out what weapons you might want for your multi-tool or your ship that way you know the next time you're in combat you're not lacking in any kind of weaponry or anything like that you're able to handle yourself fairly well um, for your ship you know your typical full-time cannon uh, will come on almost every single ship uh, I'd be surprised if you found a ship that didn't have one. They are pretty good, they do a decent amount of damage, and you know, as long as you're good at flying, you can actually uh, have a fairly easy time dealing with things like pirates and all that. There's an Infernife Accelerator, which is kind of like a plasma minigun that I kind of like. It does a decent amount of damage, however, it overheats very, very quickly. Um, there's phase beams, which is literally just a beam that you can fire at different ships. Um, they're pretty good. You know, there's the, the photon cannon, there's the phase beam, which, you know, phase beam can actually also be used as like a mining tool. Um, there's the positron ejector, which is essentially like a shotgun <laughs> for your ship, which is kind of weird. Um, and then cyclotron ballista, which is essentially just a, a ball. And then you obviously have rocket launchers for your ship as well. There's a decent amount of weapons in the game, not too many to choose from, but there's a decent amount regardless. Uh, I would suggest, you know, searching through all of these on the anomaly, all of the NPCs, and just trying to find a good weapon that, you know, goes well with what you need. 
Um, upgrades, like I said, life support and environmental protection are probably very important if you uh, need jetpack or movement upgrades. You can always find those on space stations. Um, same thing with life support upgrades and uh, any other upgrade that you can really think of. As for exocrafts, I'm probably going to try to cover in a different video. Um, this, again, is mainly just to get you up to date on kind of like how to quickly get set up in No Man's Sky. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's about it, all I really wanted to cover. I did want to cover portals, however, I felt that wasn't really necessary because you're going to unlock a portal anyway by the end of the story, the main story, the Artemis path, and um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope this video has been helpful to as many people as I can make it helpful to. Um, I know it's pretty lengthy, I don't normally do videos these long, and this took forever to edit. Um, kind of glad I'm finally getting done with it now, that way I'm able to upload it and start to work on other stuff. I'm definitely going to try to put out more, uh, you know, shorter videos on very, very specific things, like how to get portals early, or how to, uh, you know, get certain weapons or unlocks early. Um, how to, you know, just a couple different types of tutorial videos on No Man's Sky, and I definitely want to keep doing more No Man's Sky content. I may even uh, do videos on, like, looking at different bases and base building and stuff like that. Um, try to explore that as much as I can. But as for right now, that's about all you guys really need to know. Um, again, this game is very, very self-explanatory. It usually teaches you what you need to know uh, right off the bat and then uh, will usually guide you on your way throughout the different missions and stories. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is the end of the video. Thank you guys for hanging in there, for, for watching through the entire video if you did. If you didn't, that's all right. Thank you for checking out the video regardless. I hope it was helpful in any way, shape, or form. Feel free to leave some feedback down in the comments what uh you know what could be changed in the future this is just a basic starter well not basic but this is just you know <laughs> i've already said this this is mostly just a starter video and i'm probably gonna you know do other videos on certain topics within this video and and try to cover more specifics such as uh chlorine and you know cobalt duping uh, one thing I actually learned was that chlorine uh, doesn't always show up at space stations. However, cobalt usually does. So, yeah, anyway, uh, if you made it this far, feel free to leave a comment down below what I could do better in future videos and, you know, how I can make these more entertaining or more useful. You know, if there's any moments you feel like sharing with me about, you know, No Man's Sky or whatever you want to, you know, type down in the comments, let me know and I will respond if I can. I'll... I'll I usually appreciate any kind of feedback. Feel free to look out for more videos in the future. Um, now that this one is done, I've definitely got more time opened up to make shorter uh, 8 to 15 minute videos on specific things. Um, yeah, I think, that's, uh, I think that's all I really have to say. I hope everyone's having an okay holiday season. Uh, I originally wanted to get this video out in November, but it took me a long time, so I ended up getting it out now instead. Um, some of this information might be out of date, so I might have to go over and rehash some of the stuff in future videos, like I said, but uh, regardless, I hope everyone's having an okay holiday season. Um, I know I could be doing better, and you know, I hope, hope everyone will have a great 2021. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on all notifications so that you're notified every single time I upload a video. Again, leave a comment down below for any kind of feedback or criticism you might want to leave, or if you just want to share a cool story from No Man's Sky with me. And on that note, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.